All right, this is your brother Aisha Yarn coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, double honor to the apostles of the great millstone which I learned his truth from, honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing his word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity, and Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled When Thou Art Changed to a Lower State. Okay, bodies in the flesh. <laughs> When thou art changed to a lower state, bodies in a flesh. Now, I got inspired to do this lesson because of what I've recently been going through the past two weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, um, I was at the gym and I was lifting weights and everything like that. And uh, I was going on my regular routine. I didn't do anything differently. I was just going on my regular routine. And uh, it's a certain exercise. Um, it's the bend over rolls pretty much with dumbbells. I was doing that and uh, I've been doing that exercise all year, but that day two weeks ago <laughs> was something different. Um, I was doing that and then I pulled my lower back, my whole lower back just went out. All right, and uh, it happened so fast and, I, and the pain just came in immediately. I, I instantly just dropped to the floor, dropped all the weights. Uh, had to stand you know i was just on the floor for a little while and the next thing i know i was able to get up so i can walk but i couldn't walk fast at all and as soon as i stood up to um go back to my living room and then that's when the pain started getting worse and worse and worse and then it got to the point where i couldn't even stand up it was just painful all around and so you know uh i do have a history with uh lower back pain and everything like that so I do have certain precautions, you know, as far as what exercises I do. I have a heating pad and everything like that, you know, uh, definitely going to practice uh, more yoga every single day. So then, you know, this won't happen again. But um, like I said, I've been doing this exercise all year. But this one day is when <laughs> my back decided to go out. And like I said, it was no joke. The pain was there. It's 12 out of 10. It was above. <laughs> It was above 10 and, uh, you know, uh, I tried to see, you know, if I get some rest, you know, I laid down pretty much all night. And then after that, the next morning, I already knew it wasn't going to be good. I tried to get up and yeah, the pain just instantly, it was sharp the next morning. So I just like, okay, well, I got to do something about it. So uh, ended up going to the emergency room just so they can you see what's going on or whatever. And uh, I already knew what they was going to say because, like I said, I've been through this before. The only thing they, go they was going to do was give me some type of, you know, pills. You already know what it is. But um, I've been looking up different foods I can eat that can uh, cure, you know, chronic back pain. You know, and I got a list of those things in my phone. And, you know, of course, you know, they always say, you know, the, the green vegetables are good. And there's certain meats that you can eat, like salmon, that's good for that type of stuff. And so... Uh, Definitely just been trying my best, you know, to um, better myself as far as my lower back is concerned. I'm, I'm better now. Like I said, I'm able to stand up. I'm able to walk. I had to take off work for, like I said, two weeks. But um, but I'm able to stand up and walk now. I can still feel like a little tingle or whatever in my lower back. But, you know, it's always going to be like that because that's just something I, I just have. I just have lower back problems. So it is what it is. But now I know. You know, certain exercises, you know, certain exercises I know I can't do. And there's certain exercises I know I can do. And I just got to be careful, you know. And uh, it is what it is. And so pretty much with me just being at the crib, just sitting down all damn day, I was like, well, you know, when I'm able to uh, stand up and finally go do these lessons again, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about these bodies. Because as we all know, these bodies are weak and these bodies are really judgment all right because as the scriptures say we are gods but we shall die like men i think that's in the book of psalms all right we're actually not supposed to be in these bodies we're supposed to be godlike we're not supposed to feel pain or get sick and you know so so forth and so on but this is our punishment and the scriptures tell us about that so i was like well then you know instantly you know when the when the injury happened i'm just like man these bodies man it's something else but we're getting close to the point where we don't have to worry about dealing with this anymore and that's the beauty of it all right and so i was like well let me speak about this and actually you know uh get the scriptures that tells us 
that this flesh, these bodies, is judgment. All right, so we're gonna start off with this because this is the first thing, of course, that I thought about as soon as it happened. All right, so this is Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. And I definitely was changed to a lower state. A, a lower state. It's the first scripture that popped in my head as soon as it happened. It says, take whatever is brought upon thee cheerfully. I was like, evidently, the most I wanted me to go through this for whatever reason, all right? So I'm just like, well, I'm just going to go through it. I didn't get mad. I didn't, you know, of course, I was a little bit frustrated because I was on a roll, you know, with the workout game. <laughs> like every day, my body was changing. I was getting leaner. My body was getting healthier. You know, I'm taking all the herbs, eating all the vegetables and fruits every day. My body is feeling better. And I told myself, like, man, by the end of this year, I'm going to reach my goals. And Lord willing, I can still, you know, reach those goals. You know, um, I just got to take these workouts a little bit, uh, like I said, more careful. I'm not going to jump right back into weightlifting, of course. Um, I'm just going to do a lot of cardio, probably do some push-ups, and then I got to work on my core and, you know, do and stretch a lot. So I'm just going to do that for like the next couple of weeks until I feel like I'm able just to lift a little bit. But like I said, nothing extreme. But getting back to this. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And that's exactly what I did. The first thing I did, of course, you got to pray to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You got to pray to them, man, because like I said, they're the ones that put you in these positions where you are changed to a lower state. When things happen to you, that's the most high. You know, he puts you in these positions for a reason. So like I said, I didn't get mad or anything. Like I said, the first thing I did, I prayed, pray, 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 pray. Because it's, uh, the scriptures tell us to do what? Pray without season. And of course, when you in trouble, <laughs> you pray to the Lord a little bit more. I mean, that's just common sense, you know, because you want to hurry up and get out of that devastating situation. You don't want to keep going through it. Of course, you know, when you're not going through anything, you still pray to the most high as much as possible. Uh, OK, but, uh, you know, naturally, you know, you get in trouble, man, you call on those names a lot. Because what the scriptures say, this, the scriptures tell us that when you call upon his names, it's, it's a strong tower. He'll protect you. He'll change your situation in due time. It may not happen immediately, but it will happen as long as you believe. All right. That's why it says right here. Verse five, it says, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. So that's exactly what I did. As soon as it happened, I believed in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Call on the names, you know. Uh, praying in Hebrew because as we all know you get a stronger connection when you pray in the in the holy tongue all right when you pray in the Lashawan Kodash all right when you pray in the Hebrew you um speak to him uh you get closer to Yahweh Bashim Yahushan okay of course you know uh you don't have to know fluent Hebrew and everything like that of course you're gonna pray in English a lot of times because that's what we speak you know you may not know Hebrew that well but Certain uh, prayers like this one, I'm just like, man, I'm going to, you know, look it up, pray in Hebrew, and then just let him work. And in due time, he'll get me back to where I need to be. And it is what it is. And like I said, slowly but surely, it is happening. Like I said, I'm able to stand up and walk. And now I'm pretty sure I can do cardio at a slow pace and, you know, and get myself back to where I was at. So then, like I said, this is the first scripture that popped in my head when it happened. I took on this situation cheerfully. All right, I didn't complain. I was just like, let me just get through this, and in due time, everything will be all right. Okay, so now we go to the book of Jude. We're gonna go to the book of Jude, and then we're gonna go to uh, start at one. It says, The warnings of history to the ungodly. All right, it says, Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai of Mashiach, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by the power of the Father, Yahweh, and preserved in Yahweh Shai of Mashiach, and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, 
ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only power in our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. I would therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That's right, we did know this once before. And there's a point in verse 6, it says, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Who are these angels? It's us, the Israelites. It says the angels was kept not their first estate. What's the first estate? Following the commandments, statutes, and laws. Being an actual Hebrew Israelite. All right. It says, but left their own habitation. He have reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness. What's the chains under darkness? This body, the flesh. All right. Unto the judgment of the great day. Okay. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to look up angels. Let's go here real quick. Let me make sure this is. Put on the right thing. Okay. Now we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at this word angels. Oh, hold on, hold on, go back, go back. Okay, here's the Greek word. Strong's G32. Angelos. Angelos. Angelos, all right. Then it says, right here, it says, a messenger, envoy, one who was sent, an angel, a messenger from the Mosai. And we are messengers of the Mosai. That's literally what the word apostle means. It means sent out. It means messenger, all right? We are messengers of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because we are sending the message out to um, our people, to two-thirds, to the whole world, all right? We letting people know what's getting ready to happen as far as nuclear destruction, as far as slavery, as far as the kingdom is at hand, all right? We are messengers. Now, a lot of people, you know, they will get that confused because a lot of people will go to this. They'll go to Genesis, the sixth chapter, right? And they'll read this and they'll say, uh, no, this is actually talking about angels, but this is Genesis chapter six, and we're gonna start at one. And it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right, now when they read this, they will say, These are the angels, because it says the sons of the Most High. All right, but you got to remember, we are sons of the Most High. We are sons of the Most High. All right, because when you get Hosea, the first chapter, and then you go down to verse 10. It says right here, Yet the number of children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it said unto them, You are not my people. And that's exactly what we're experiencing right now. We are, this world literally tells you blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans that you are not the chosen. They tell you that the fake Jews over there are the chosen, but we know that's not true. It says, There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. All right. We're the sons of the living power. We are uh like angels. All right. Because that word that was our first estate. Hold on, let's get um let me see if I can find this word. Let's see what definition they got down here. All right, they have son, grandson, child, member of a group, son, male, child, grandson, children, youth, young men, and they have animals. Then it says right here, sons as characterization, i.e. sons of injustice, <laughs> but unrighteous men or sons of the most side. Then it says for angels, all right, people of a nation of lifeless things, i.e. sparks, stars, arrows, a member or a member of a guild, order, or class, all right? So we are sons of the living power, all right? We definitely are. Now, when you go here, we're gonna go to Matthew chapter 11, right? You go to Matthew chapter 11, and then you go down to verse 10. It says, for this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, who is this talking about? Now, we go to the tools, you go to messenger, right? You go to messenger. It's the same word 
that we read in Jude. And what's the word? Strong's G32, Angelos. Angelos. Angelos, all right? The same word that we read when we went to Jude. And what does it say? A messenger, envoy, one who is sent, an angel, a messenger from the Most High. So we are the messengers. We are the ones that left the first estate. We're the ones who left the living power, the righteous ways of living, and we went into the world, started following idols, we're worshiping idols, started doing whatever we wanted to do, and we forsook our power. But now through the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai defeated death, all right, he went on the cross and he and all of our sins was put on him. All right, so now we have a way back to the Most High. And now within these last days, what's happening? The Most High has given us this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to uh, know these scriptures and to deliver this message to the people, giving out the warnings, all right? Letting people know, especially our people, you need to get right with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, right? Telling them to repent, stop getting lining, stop celebrating holidays, stop smoking, so forth and so on. You know what it is, all right? So we are messengers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So now when you go back to Jew, you know what this is speaking of. Now when you go back to Jew, then we read it again. And it says right here, and the angels was kept not their first estate. Now we know who the angels are right here. The angels are us, the Israelites, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. That chains under darkness is this flesh because we're not angel-like anymore. All right. We are not angel-like. We don't have those God-like bodies, but we're getting ready to get those back. And that's why it says it's to the judgment of the great day. Being in these bodies is judgment. Because being in these bodies is horrible. <laughs> it really is. You know, everybody know how it is to get injured. Everybody know how it is to get sick. Everybody know how it is to run out of breath. All of those things, man. When you're in these bodies, we don't have full, uh, we don't have full, we can't have a full, um, what's the word, capacity for our brains. But when we get those new bodies, we're going to have 100% use of it. Okay. So it is what it is. So at the end of the day, change of the darkness represents this flesh. And this is why we go through things like I just went through as far as receiving injuries, getting sick, so forth and so on. Because we're in these chains of darkness, which is this flesh. All right. Now we're going to get 2 Corinthians. Um, make sure I type it out all the way. Okay. <laughs> Because you already know they'll be tweaking. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're gonna go to verse uh we're gonna go to verse 15. Alright, and it says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through <clears throat> Salakia, read that again. It says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of the most high, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. All right, yeah, the inward man is renewed day by day because we're rehearsing these righteous acts and we're having faith and we're believing in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The things that we have not seen are these, one of the things, are these bodies, all right? The things uh, that's temporal, meaning temporary, are these bodies right now, okay? Now, when you go to 2 Corinthians, we're going to go to the next chapter. We'll go to chapter 5. Hold on, go back, go back. They're going to do it like this. Okay, okay. Now, when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 1. It says... The temporal and eternal, right? It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. What is it speaking about? The bodies. Your earthly house, that's your body. All right, that's why it says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, right? Now, let's look up this word earthly real quick. So, you look up this word earthly. Here's the Greek word. Strong's G, 1919. Epigaios. Epigaios. Epigaios, right? And it says what? 
existing upon the earth, earthly, terrestrial. We are in terrestrial bodies. And what? It says existing upon the earth. We are existing upon the earth, right? Yeah, we living in this earth. But see, the glory and the beauty of it is when we get those new bodies, we're still going to rule in the earth. That's like it says in Revelation 5 and 9, I believe. All right. We're going to rule in the earth. And but right now we are in these what? Terrestrial bodies. So now when you go back, go back and uh, let's read it again. It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For what does it say right here? For in this we groan, <laughs> earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. What is that? The new bodies. It says, for in this we groan. Just like when I got my injury, what did I do? I groan. I'm in pain. Okay? Can't walk, can't stand. If you try to move any type of way, the pain sharpens because of this what? This earthly house, these bodies. That's why it says right here, a sigh to groan. All right? It says, in straits, i.e. by implication, to sigh, murmur, pray inaudibly <laughs> with grief, groan, grudge, sigh. We are in these bodies, okay? These bodies ain't no joke. These bodies are judgment. These fleshly bodies, these earthly houses. Okay, so it says, but in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with thy house, which is from heaven. We're desiring. We want those new bodies so bad. That's why we do this work. That's why we pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai every single day because we're ready to be changed. We're getting tired of living in these bodies. We want to be gods, man. We want. We finally want to be in a life and in a body where we don't have to worry about running out of breath. You don't have to worry about being injured. You don't have to worry about getting sick. All right. You don't have to worry about you know a lot of things, man, because we're going to be in those godlike bodies, and it's going to feel different. We don't know how those bodies are going to operate yet, of course, but we're getting ready to see. Starting with the hundred and forty-four thousand, they're going to receive the spiritual power, the new bodies, and then of course. All of the elect are going to receive the new bodies when they get beamed up on the chariots. All right. So that's what it is, man. We grown in these bodies. <laughs> like I said, just like I did for the past two weeks. It says, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. <laughs> All right. So that's what it is. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. It says, Now he that hath wrought, now it says, Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing, but for the self same thing is the Most High, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, <laughs> we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. All right. We have faith that we're going to receive those new bodies because the scriptures tell us the ones that endure to the end will receive the war. They'll be saved, right? Part of being saved is getting beaten up on a chariot. And like it says in this, which I'm going to end the um, lesson with, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, right? Go to 1 Corinthians. It tells you about uh, the terrestrial bodies. All right, so when you go to 1 Corinthians, we're going to get straight to the point let me see um because this whole you really can read this whole chapter and it and it, it goes in like this chapter breaks down the bodies like to a t letting us know that we are guys and right now we just up in this you know this flesh man let's start here all right let's start at uh let me see if i should go back up Let's start at verse 38. It says, But the Most High giveth it a body as it had pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. And then it says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. We just read that we are in these terrestrial bodies, right? Now, when you, let's look up the word celestial real quick. See what it says for that. It's the Greek word. Strong's G 2032. Epuranias. 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 
<laughs> Eboranias, all right? And what it say? It says, existing in heaven, things that take place in heaven. But what we say, we was like, the kingdom is going to be here on earth. Heaven is going to be here on earth. It's going to really show the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, because he's going to allow this power to reign here on the earth. It says, the heavenly regions, heaven itself, the abode of the Most High and the angels, the lower heavens of the stars, the heavens of the clouds, the heavenly temple with sanctuary of heavenly origin or nature, or nature, okay? So this is what we're getting ready to experience. We're getting ready to experience the celestial bodies, the God-like bodies, all right? It says, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. It says, there was one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. All right. We are sown right now in corruption, but we're going to be raised in incorruption, meaning we're never going to die, man. We're never going to be harmed. That's like it says in the book of Revelation. No more tears, no more death, no more sorrow. All of that is going to be swallowed up in victory. All right. Verse 43, it says it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Say that again. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. It's easy to understand, man. All right. We are in the natural bodies. We don't have the spiritual body yet, but we're getting ready to receive that, Lord willing. And it says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And as we all know, Yahweh Shai was Adam, all right? Yahweh Shai, well, uh, like the scriptures say, Yahweh Shai is the beginning and the end, right? He uh sin started with Yahweh Shai when he was ain't when he was uh Adam. And then he came back as Yahweh Shai, the Lord, and he took sin away from us so we can have a way back to the Most High. All right, he literally is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All right, verse forty eight it says, "As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly." And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We're going to be gods. All right. And we don't never have to worry about going through any type of pain or anguish ever again. Verse 50, it says, and like I said, the mystery of the resurrection. What the scriptures say, the mysteries are given unto his servants, the prophets, right? Just like it says in the book of Amos. So this is a mystery. A lot of people would not believe this, but we do. We do. All right. Verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither the corruption inherit incorruption. But I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, where the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal, this mortal, something that can die, decay, must put on immortality, the body where we will never die. Uh, verse 54 says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up by victory. Like I said earlier, that's the victory. And Apostle Gabar always said that, you know, that's why I learned about this the most from him because i never forget what he said in one of his past videos he was like yeah the kingdom is great you know multiple wives is great actually being able to enjoy your children is great not being able to go to work that's great he was like yeah all of those things are going to be beautiful but he said the icing on the cake are the bodies man the bodies we're going to actually be able to enjoy the earth in these bodies that's going to treat us well every single day man <laughs> You ain't got to worry about, you know, getting older. And when you get older, you, you start to lose hair. You go bald. And, you know, um, certain men may have ED, <laughs> you know, because uh, they don't have as much testosterone as they need and everything like that. You know, uh, certain women, you know, they get the they get the pot bellies and everything. You know, it is what it is, man. You know how it is in this earth. 
and what these bodies can do to you. You know, certain things can happen that you just can't help. All right. You know, women are going to get their hair back. You know, a lot of them, not, they're not going to have short hair anymore. They're going to be able to grow hair all the way down to the ground and further. You know, all of these curses are going to be lifted off of us because we're going to be in those new bodies because we swallowed death up in victory, meaning we were saved from this destruction that's getting ready to happen. As soon as that's why it says in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. This is speaking about when the chariots come up. When the chariots show themselves, we're going to be beamed up quick. That's why it says in the twinkling of an eye, because you got to remember the chariots are going to beam up the elect while the missiles are being shot over here. So it's going to be an actual real real scene of uh being saved man because when those when soon as they announce and you hear those alarms and everything go off and they tell you to get to the nearest safe zone or whatever the case may be that's when even the ones that's in this truth all of our hearts are going to be beaten at that time all of us because we're going to be like damn man is this, this is it we already know what it is either you're getting ready to be saved or you're getting ready to die and this is why we take this truth seriously every single day. We're trying to do the most that we possibly can every single day because when that moment comes, we're going to want to be saved, man, because that's not going to that's not that's going to be scary. Very scary, man. Very scary. You know, it's scary to the point where you probably actually want to go the martyr route. <laughs> You're like, man, fuck that. Go ahead and chop my head off so I can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, you like, man, let me just go ahead and get this shit over with. But at the same time, no, hey, this is faith, though. This is why, you know, the most I called us into this truth to give us and let us understand this warning. But like, this, like I said, getting back to this, though, it says in the twinkling of an eye. So when the chariot show up, we're going to be beamed up quick because we got to hurry up and get away from the nuclear destruction. So within that literal blinking of, of an eye, our bodies are going to be changed. And then after that, we're going to be inside the chariots and we never have to worry about what we're going through in this earth ever again man we're going to be in the celestial bodies and it's going to be great and you know of course it's one of the like i said one of the first things that i thought about when it happened to me i'm just like man i just i can't wait for this to be over you know jacob's trouble is going to be something else of course but it's going to be worth it though because that's only temporary you know it's like the apostles say man jacob's trouble might just be you know uh they say probably like a month to a few months it ain't going to last long because it tells you that in the book of Joel 20 and 23, you know, I always bring that out as well. You know, the most High is going to interfere while he's eating, you know. And so as soon as, the, as Esau rolls out his NWO and all these MOTV stations are mandatory, that's when the most High is going to interfere. And that's when your house shot is going to come back. And that's it. Esau's not going to have a chance to actually see his NWO stand up and last for a while no as soon as he get as soon as he pushes the button for everything to happen that's when your howard shot comes back so it's not going to be that long but it's going to seem like it just for the simple fact that when you're in pain and you're in suffering time seems like it slows down because you want to hurry up and get that pain and suffering over with this is the thing where you're gonna have to have patience you're gonna have to and that's what patience is it's suffering you're just gonna have to endure that like the scriptures say all right so around that time, like I said, you just got to keep doing what you need to do. Keep having faith in you. How about Shemmy Shai? And then that's it. All right. And then Lord willing, we all get these new bodies. Lord willing, we all meet up on a chariot. You know, we praise you. How about Shemmy Shai? Loud and wonderfully. And then after that, man, you know, shit. We're going to be, you know, giving each other hugs. <laughs> that's how it's going to be, man. Giving each other hugs. We won't be smiling at each other and everything like that. All of us going to be happy that we made it, man. It's going to be worth it. It's definitely going to be worth it. So I just want to bring this out, like I said, because as soon as my uh, lower back went out, you know, I wasn't able to do lessons because, like I said, I wasn't even able to stand up. You know, I wasn't able to stand up and everything like that. But now the most has gotten it to the point where, like I said, I could, um, you know, get back to uploading these videos. And then after that, you know, once my back is 100%, I'll be able to stand up and do things regularly again. And um, then I'll get ready to invest in a new camera so I can finally record these um, uh, highways and byways videos. Cause I know I've been, a lot of things been happening. <laughs> a lot of things been happening in life lately, but um, you know, 
I always pray to the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shine, you know, for the best. And, you know, this is for him just to, you know, not take the Holy Spirit away from me, you know. I don't want to wake up one morning and then, you know, I upload a video and then brother say I'm bugging out or I just don't do videos at all or I stop praying. I, I don't want that, man. I want to do this work. I want to do this work, you know, and I, I enjoy doing this work. Every time, you know, when I get ready to upload videos, I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to edify the flock, man. I'm ready to help, you know, wake up the elect through the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. So, I'm going to end it with that. Like I said, I just wanted to bring that out, a lesson about the flesh. And it is what it is, man. So, keep enduring, y'all. Just keep enduring. And Lord willing, you know, we get up out of here and we be saved. So, I hope this is edifying. So, with that, I'm saying call Halayim. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.